Well, welcome back, everyone. We just saw a marvelous film. This is one of the most unique documentaries that I've seen all year. And I just love to reintroduce the director and co-producers, Sachi Cunningham and Chandler Evans, and also the subject, Bill Shannon. Well, one thing I like to jump right into, and I'm sure what all the audiences are wondering too, is how did all this start? How did this begin? Where, you went on quite a journey, so you had to start somewhere. Um, well, it began with Bill being born. <laughs> and um, uh, I met Bill in elementary school. I actually didn't know him in elementary school. He went to the same elementary school as I did. And I noticed um, him as a kid wearing a leg brace that you see in the movie and was always curious about who he was and was able to meet him in high school. And um, he later told me that he was choreographing for Cirque du Soleil. And I, at the time, was looking to get into documentary films. I was previously working in feature and commercial films. And so I said, can I follow you with a camera? Can I come interview you? And so that first interview that I did is actually the first interview that starts the film. And that was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, I met Chandler very early on in that process. Chandler and I met at Brown University in a multiracial students organization. And we re-met each other at a bar in Los Angeles. So it was a little bit of chance involved there, but um, couldn't have done it without him. So as soon as um, he was at the time working on a film about the first blind man to climb Mount Everest. And I was like, you have to look at this film that I'm working on. And um, yeah. Little did he know that it would take us 20 years working together to finish it, but um, here we are. I don't know if Chandler wants to add something. Yeah, jump uh, in. How did you feel when you first met Saatchi and decided that this might be something of interest for you? Well, I mean, Bill's movements are one of a kind. Like I was blown away immediately by the footage that Saatchi showed me. She had uh, like, you know, 14 minutes of this beautiful dancing performances and uh, we decided to work together to cut it down to a four minute promo. And at that point we took this four minute promo and we put it on this little site called YouTube. And um, a few months later, when Google purchased YouTube, the founders of YouTube, Steve Chen and Chad Hurley, they had an announcement on the front page of YouTube to say, oh, we just sold to Google for $1.6 billion. And then the video that they selected from the millions of videos on YouTube to follow their announcement was Crutch. And so we went viral very early in the days of YouTube. And uh, at that point, both I think both Sachi and I were clear that we had a story that we needed to follow. So we definitely did that. <laughs> and that was where you took off. Yep. Bill was very patient with us. Yes. But did you have any idea that it would become a feature feature documentary or just little bits? Oh no, we always had our eyes, our sights set on a feature, which is why it took so long. Yeah. Yep. Well, this has gone through so many different stages, I'm sure, and using footage from all sorts of different sources. What did you start off with? I mean, VHS? Well, we were fortunate that Bill had a whole treasure trove of um, media for us to work with. You know, a lot of the, all of the, of course, all the photos you see in the film of his family um, were provided to us by him. And then he had also, he had filmed himself doing a lot of stuff. And um, he actually, I borrowed his camera to film that first interview and he did his best to coach me on how to actually do that. <laughs> but I still actually use that interview as a, an example for my students. I teach now at San Francisco State and I use that interview as an example of how not to do interviews. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's where a lot, a lot of the footage was um, just thanks to Bill and his, you know, um, just steadily collecting everything, being very good about documenting his work and his process. Yeah, but we, we started on DV tapes. Um, yep. And uh, I mean, we basically, because we followed Bill for so long, for another 10 years, we were shooting DV. And so we basically also created our own archival library 
to draw from because when we switched to HD, then we used, you know, we relied a lot on the HD footage, but then we had our own footage to draw from as well. So it, it was a combination of sources. And then there were other people involved too, um, some of Bill's friends and, and, and dancers that he's worked with, like Cyclone, Dave Fogler, had a ton of uh, amazing underground hip hop footage. And uh, so we were really lucky that people had recorded. And also Bill's friends from back in the day in Pittsburgh, Brian Cummings was, a, was a, an amazing video artist and had documented so much of what Bill and his friends were doing, skating, making art. Um, the, the arrest scene, scene the scene where the Bill arrest gets scene, arrested, yes. and that was all VHS, you know, shot on a VHS camera. So, um, yeah, we could, uh, yeah, that was amazing. There's, yeah. so, there's also someone to mention is uh, my friend Griff, who um, that first fight, the crutch doc that was um, on the Google uh, purchase of YouTube, that footage, uh, in the yellow raincoat and the street skating black and white, um, that was actually shot on 35 millimeter. And uh, he had dumped that to me to like, I think it was like beta SP. And then I also had like a mini DV. So I gave that to, to Sachi, like this is the best footage right now that I have. And, you know, Griff is a underground filmmaker and artist. Um, and so I think his footage um, at that particular time um, was, was amazing to have at 35, uh, 35 millimeter uh, shot of the street skating, you know? So that's another one that's um, a really important um, contribution. And also I have to give a shout out to my mom because she would do these like random, like, I'm just gonna do this. And so she just bought a camera in 1986, I guess, like a RCA, Vic, RCA um, Victor or something like that, uh, an RCA camera that um, was actually a really good VHS. You could dub with it and all kinds of things. And so a lot of the earliest footage, um, that's pretty embarrassing. Like, you know, this is my body, like that scene with the panel <laughs> and like my face and I'm like 16 or 17. That was shot on that, um, on that RCA um, uh, a camcorder. Uh, so there's a whole history of digital video footage. And also myself, I'm an, I'm an interdisciplinary artist and, a, you know, a majority of the work that I do that's not dance is video. So there was there was that big library there. So yeah, but but Griff is an important uh, person to mention because of that. Um, yeah, that, thank your, you. Your that, brother with the eight. Yeah, numbers. I also was gonna say yeah, Ben. My brother too. Yeah, Ben. Ben's um, the shot with me stilting across the street with the woman walking with me, coming out of that weird Chicago hospital that looked like something out of a. Terry Gilliam film, like that shot uh, my brother got uh, was poetry, you know, it was a really, it was real poetry. So all of those different, every single media of our entire video history of media is on that, except maybe, no, even the vacuum tube camera, the black and white for recovery with the surgery. I shot that on a three quarter beta um, unit that was like the size of a suitcase with an analog black and white tube camera um, that I had borrowed from the the guard, the like the the, the go throwaway bin of the school of the artists through Chicago. They had this like corner of the room where nobody used that equipment. And so there's also that history of video of that, that going way back. So anyway, there's a whole lot of different styles of media on in there. It's incredible. And you, so much you had to sit through. How many hours did it take to go through all of this and decide, <laughs> make the decisions? What is going to be included in this film. It was an hour that was months. <laughs> years. It was years. <laughs> yeah, years. Um, yeah, no, it was really hard because there's so many storylines too. Um, I mean, Bill has done so many different things and, and even, even in what we were able to tell, I mean, that's really condensing so much and there were still so many more avenues for us to explore. And um, I'm, I mean, Bill can talk to it, but like, you know, there's like, he invented, you know, this whole way of moving and, and this whole dance form. At the same time, he also invented this whole skateboard movement, which also has that he broke down into movements and names and everything like that. And we couldn't even touch that. Like we could only just show little bits of it. So there's so much that we could have explored with Bill. And he's still making art, so we could continue. Mm -hmm. 
And you must have gone through so many different cuts too in the editing process. So right now, it one thing that makes this one of the most unique documentaries that I've seen this year is that it basically starts off fairly traditionally. This is Bill's life. This is, and then it graduates into his life as an artist. And then it just completely goes way out into the world of art as politics. Mm. So how did that work out? How did that finally come to be? Um, I think some of it is just following the trajectory of Bill's, Bill's artistic evolution. You know, some of, um, he was doing more performance-based work in the, when we first started um, following him. And um, it, I mean, I think in the film, it comes kind of in the span of when we were following him that his work took a shift towards wanting to do these performances in public to pull out, you know, the ways that, ways of seeing um, and trying to communicate those ways of seeing. Um, so there's actually, there's one scene in the film where Bill is showing me um, a sketchbook of a future project called Window, Bench and Traffic, which he tries to explain to us, but, and has sketches for it, but we're just kind of like, okay, like not really, <laughs> not sure we understand where you're going with that, but um, you know, lo and behold, you just wait around long enough and um, he manifested all of that beautifully. And so the final scene that you um, see of people on the bus watching him at, you know, the uh, Chicago Art Museum is part of that traffic, the third in that trilogy, the traffic piece. I get Chandler, yeah. Anything to add, Chandler? I well, I mean, part of the the, the structural build of the story was that it would there, there was so many things happening at the same time that it was difficult to make it clear. And at one point, I think Sachi and I tried to like just go chronologically. And if you did that, you'd be like, oh, he's doing this, but oh, he's also doing this art. But then he's skating over here. But then he was like entered a b boy competition, and it's like it started getting confusing. So it was like, well, why don't we tell the story, like the more traditional story first so that you understand and you have all the parameters that you need to appreciate and understand his artwork. And then at sort of at the midpoint, we can switch over into the artistry and then take a deeper dive into you know, the, the ex exploration and the experiments that he was doing and, and, and talk about the phenomenology that he uncovered and, and shows to the audience. Um, and to, but to do those concomitantly was gonna be it, it, too much back and forth. So I think this was actually the easiest way to tell Bill's story clearly, but also give the audience the fundamentals that they needed because there's so much that they, that's original that Bill does, the dancing and skating on, you know, uh, with crutches, that you need to appreciate that first and then you can understand what he's doing with his um, other artworks. I also think it's important to um, at note that even though we hadn't seen that progression of his art, you know, 20 years ago, Bill was very clear from the start that he didn't want us to take the traditional disability narrative of triumph over adversity, you know, so at the beginning he was choreographing for Cirque, he was doing this amazing dance and winning b-boy contests, and that would be a place to crescendo too in a normal narrative or you know but Bill was very clear from the start that that he was not at all interested in that of adding to you know disability porn and to really be trying to change the way people think through this film which I you know I hope we do. Yes you certainly do and you were involved in the editing process Bill? Um, I mean, I was invited to sit in on editing sessions and I definitely was, you know, given a seat at the table and, you know, I mean, I didn't have final edit, obviously. So, you know, that was a, a big deal. Like I didn't want it to be called crutch. You know, I just, I just didn't like the title, but I had been, that had been a past phase in my career of using the handle crutch. So that is something that I had passed up. And so when they were like, well, we want to call it crutch, you know, in the beginning, I was like, cool, crutch, because that's what that was like my b-boy name, or whatever. But then, you know, so there's a lot of things where, oh, I might have done this or that differently, or I might have. But at the end of the day, you know, I feel like I 
was able to give them input on what they were making. And, you know, that, that you know, to be fair, you know, a lot of that process was with Chandler. I was sitting with Chandler who was writing every single word into like this giant book of every word that was said in the entire footage that we had, which is totally insane to me. And just sitting there looking through made me, made my head hurt. Like, how do you, you know, like I couldn't, I'm incapable of doing something like that. And so it was, it really, you know, I built up some respect to, just around the process of, you know, how much they were having to handle, even though I was looking at it, like how much is missing at the same time. Um, at the end of the day, it was just, you know, it's the kind of thing where it really should be an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and 30 minutes, honestly, like, or whatever, like, no, no, like two hours. It should be two hours. It's 90 minutes now. It, yeah. should, be two, it should be two hours, really. I felt like at the time, like I was looking at it, like, there's a whole thing of like stepping roll with the skateboarding and the spin back to board and the tip stall and the flip tip stall and the, you know, 540 kick flip, double 360 on the crutch, you know, like all of that progression. And the same way we did the dance, there was that whole section. And then there's a whole section of around political visual art and the history, you know, like that part with my parents where we have the, you know, the, the fist up in front of linen and, and all that, like the history of my red diaper baby is what it's called. The terminology for how I was a red diaper baby in the Reagan era. So, you know, I was basically um, came out of that and into my early years before the dancing on the crutches became acknowledged. I was a very much of a political performance artist. And even though because I got so much attention and the career built up around dancing on crutches, the, all the political performance art and the whole like provocateur, like political provocateur that all that work that I was doing kind of took a back burner, but it never went away. And so there's all this other material of like footage of me at uh, the, you know, during the Gulf War, all the media stuff I did, all the visual arts, all that stuff. So all the political activism um, kind of channeled more into the disability related activism, which is relevant. It's, you know, the human rights component of disability activism. And, and so it was relevant in that way. And so, um, yeah, I just, I just, there's just so much to um, explore. And I feel like they did a great job of compressing so much into such a quick, you know, and, and one of the things that, that both Sachi and Chandler kind of pointed out to me was, you know, look at some other documentaries. And so I started looking at other documentaries just to get a sense of the density of how compressed the content was. And it's a, just a diff, this doc is like way different than a lot of docs, you know, they have this scene where the person's driving in their car. There's that one scene that I'm joking kind of, but where the sort of they're in the car driving and there's this conversation that happens and they're just random footage of like the location, like the road whatever. And there's a little bit of that at Pittsburgh scene, but that's so short. And it just seems like the rambling sort of talking head stuff was really cut back pretty, pretty hardcore. So I feel like it's definitely kept the vibe of the doc, you know, pretty, pretty quick pace, you know, like. Yeah. Any comments on that Chandler or Sachi? I mean, we had our battles <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I mean, but in, in many ways, they were good battles, too. I mean, Sachi mentioned, like, in the beginning, though, it was like, I'm not going to be part, uh, you know, I do not want this to be a triumph over adversity story. Like, he just was not down for that. And, you know, even, you know, Sachi and I, you know, we're, we're multiracial. We, you know, have our own obstacles that we overcome. And so we understand the idea of being misunderstood, right? But here's Bill coming from a very specific viewpoint and, and we, it took us time to really understand like, you know, how important that was, you know, and that, and the damage that the triumph over adversity narrative had done to disability narr narratives over the, over the years, you know? So to be able to push forward and then also like to sort of move into new territory and, and do something different with that kind of narrative was, you know, it, an honor and a pleasure, but it was hard. And, uh, and it, it, Bill's pushback, even though sometimes it was tough to hear, was necessary for us to get where we arrived at, so. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would also just add to that that I'm really grateful that Bill did grant us final cut. That was very important to us, but was just um, a show of, of support and trust, you know, in us as artists, as we were trusting him and as an artist, I think that mutual respect help us, helped us get through those battles, you know, and it was important ultimately that we had that. Right. Thank you, Bill. Hey, thank you. <laughs> I, mean, I think the one, I think the biggest contention I feel like out of all of it was the documentary kind of documenting its own impact on my life. Like that the documentary kind of created this energy around what I was doing and they started to meet other people and that kind of thing. And then what they were meeting and experiencing, they were inviting me into. And so it was almost like a feedback loop um with the uh, Perthes camp where like I had never met anyone with Perthes really like um maybe I met like one guy in a waiting room who was a deep sea diver who had Perthes or whatever like that's it in a hospital once um so that whole aspect of the film became like the backbone in a way sort of like the beginning and the end and then parts in the middle sort of a reprieve it became the reprieve became the return to place in it um, I think it kind of um, played a role in sort of uh, people getting an angle on this, on the sort of human element um, that, you know, they weren't there with my family. They weren't there with me and my kids very much. They were, you know, they would come to the events and they would come to the shows and they would come to the contest and they would be, you know, street, we'd capture street skating, but it wasn't like some, some, you know, kind of corner of the room, you know, like family type footage, you know, so I think that replaced family in a way. It's sort of, there's a moment there with, with, with my kids and, and, and now my former wife, Leia, where is, you know, there's some family scene there kind of showing the progression, but it wasn't kind of really going into it too much. So I think that the, the documentary documenting itself was something that I felt very challenged by and kind of questions. But people like that part a lot. So, you know, including like my brother, he's like, Bill, you know, this. <laughs> so well, we were, we were also working on constraints that Bill had, um, had asked us to not focus on the family. So, you know, and focus on the work. So it was getting creative right. with things like that. But I also had some reservations about that filming of the scene. I studied documentary under John Els at UC Berkeley. And, you know, we learn the rules and we certainly broke a lot of rules, starting with me being friends with Bill, like Vanner Herzog <laughs> says, you're not supposed to be friends with your subject, which I think is a great idea. <laughs> but um, in this case, um, it was impossible to um, get around that. And in fact, I don't think Bill would have granted us the access he did if he didn't know me beforehand. Um, at least that's, I think, what you've said in the past, right, Bill? So, so yeah, broke a lot of rules on this one, but you know, that's that's what Bill's all about. So <laughs> I think it's fair. Well, that's what makes it exciting too. And that's why it's playing in our film festival. Uh, Thank you, yeah. Thanks. Any other um, festivals picking it up? Uh, Real um, Abilities is coming up in New York, in New York City. Uh, great. We're excited, excited about that too. Well, I'm sure I want to know, and I'm sure our audience wants to know, what's next? What new projects are in the works for either of you, all of you? Do you want to go, Bill? Uh, I mean, I could, sure, I could talk about what I'm working on now. Um, I just put up uh, four drawings that I did, like some line art, some comics, um, and the site is Arts Work in the Age of Biotechnology. Um, and the comic I did was sort of um, an exploration of sort of bioethics and um, the role of these sort of xenobots and, and the brain and empathy and sort of exploring some of these um, questions um, around how this has an impact politically. So if you go to the site Arts Work and the Age of Biotechnology, you'll see like four of my drawings there. One of them is a Venn diagram on the relationship between military robotics and medical robotics. 
and how they kind of like overlap each other and where they separate and how it's like a almost like a, a loop. Um, and so that that sort of the politics of robotics from a disability perspective in a militarized America. So there's that's the one. And then the other one is Jeff Bezos sort of like realizing that he should, you know, so anyway, that's the one thing I'm working on. Um, and then I'm just doing a lot of a really a lot of drawing. Um, um, just with my own my own stories and uh, you know I have the farm here um, you know try raising my family and working with my kids you know just teaching as much as I can or at least at least trying to get my teenager to listen to me for five minutes mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so there's that project of, of raising the kids and 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 um, doing it in, in a way that uh, is going to be you know um, I don't know, like just to, to help them along, you know, uh, to help them along. And so, yeah. That's a big challenge. And the, and the video mask is the other thing, you know, the wearable video mask, um, which was my latest sort of one. There's a little snippet of it, of the scene of the two people talking with the mask on that was from my production touch update. And so the other thing I'm working on is refining that. I'm trying to get some capital together to sort of build some uh, more that are rentable so you can rent them for a day or whatever. Um, but I need to make them more durable. And, and so I'm also uh, uh, working on um, this new one that the screen can has is on servo. So the screen is here, but then it can move in four pieces sort of off the face and back on instead of having to lift it. Because the one thing was kind of like lifting, it was awkward. So if it actually is mounted on servos, then those panels can move themselves you know, and you can trigger them. So that's what I want to have. It, I want it to have it triggered so the mask opens and closes so you could, the mask could be talking and you could be like, no, no, I actually want that. And then it would close back over you. And so there's like this drama of your projected self, your sort of virtual self versus your real self and writing scripts where two people are talking and it's their mask, which is their sort of projected selves talking, but then their real selves try to break through and talk to the other, the other real self or they're talking to the other mask. And they're also talking to their own mask. So they're arguing with their own projected self in the same way with the way that we do we post things on the internet hey i went to the beach look at the beautiful sunset and sort of that's like the projected like you know social narrative that you project out there but then underneath there's like i'm i feel like swimming out in the middle of the ocean and and, and just staying out there and never coming back you know and so that conflict between your projected self and your real self um, as a video performed you perform the face of your projected self then you actually live perform your real self and then you script it so that the space of your pre-recorded self allows your real self, then it opens up. So it's a timing thing where you write it, then you speak it, then you have like the, the reaction face while the real face talks, you know, so it's just, it's kind of complicated to write a script where each character has two faces and sometimes the projected faces talk, sometimes the real faces talk, and then sometimes the real face talks to a projected face like that, you know, so there's like these layers of, of conversation happening. And you know, so I've been reading all these books on screenplay writing and, you know, uh, narrative arcs and, you know, all these different things and trying to figure it out. So, so that's where I'm at. Well, that's a good pitch right there. The future is on our doorstep. <laughs> what about you, Chandler and Sachi? What are you going to work on? Um, I guess I'll go. I, I actually were in DocFest because um, the executive producer on my current documentary called She Changed, which is about female big wave surfers fighting for um, pay equity in the sport of big wave surfing. Um, so my executive, executive producer on that, Luisa Hoyos, recommended that I get in touch with uh, Joni Cooper, who, um, you know, heads your festival. And uh, because of your doc pitch um, funding pitch. Uh, so I got in touch with her about that and then said, and I have this other film that is screening now. And she said, you know, can we have that film? So um, so that was great. Um, a nice, uh, you know, colliding of, of projects. But um, the She Change project is also going to be a feature length documentary that is still looking for funding. So any funders out there? please contact me. <laughs> it's the forever um, issue for, I think, most documentary filmmakers, independent documentary filmmakers. 
And um, I also, I have an eight year old daughter who I'm also trying, that's a big project. And um, especially during the time of the pandemic, just, uh, you know, schooling her at home. She goes back to school next week in two weeks, next week. Yeah. So that's very exciting. And um, yeah, and then I do a lot of water surf photography and um, surf videography on the, on the side. So working on other people's projects for, you know, work for hire okay. and that capacity. And Chandler, what do you um, have next? I just want to add a little bit to what Bill was saying, because uh, I, one of the reasons that Satch and I really wanted to include something, you know, the, the stuff we shot for Touch Update, which is the video projection mask stuff, is in, in 2020, is to really show that this is a, you know, the story is a, a glimpse into a story that's continuing, you know, Bill's still creating artwork and he's still breaking boundaries, because the stuff he's doing with the projected video mask is like, complete, I mean, he's engineering this, he's creating something new again in a different frontier and you know bill is a living legend he's still doing it and when this pandemic passes he's still going to be out there and the audiences will be able to follow his work and see him in person and see him do his thing so this isn't you know this is not a doc that something happened and then that's it you know oh great you know look into the past and this is a glimpse into someone who's an artist who's still creating and still doing it so i think it's important to point that out um, in, in terms of my own work, I'm, I'm actually uh, transitioning into uh, uh, narrative feature stuff, and I'm working on a capoeira, which is a Brazilian martial art action comedy, um, and hope to shoot that sometime in, within the, within this year. <laughs> Great. I also wanted to give a shout out to my teaching. I, I wasn't able, I wouldn't have been able to finish this film without teaching at San Francisco State, where I teach journalism. I've been on sabbatical this year, um, but I'll be back teaching undergraduates journalism, multimedia journalism next year. So wonderful. So everybody and take Sashu's class. Yes. Yeah. Apply to SF State, major in journalism. <laughs> and just to end this, I want to ask you where can Crutch be seen? At Docklands. Yeah, <laughs> beyond Docklands. <laughs> We're working on it. Yeah, um, we're working on a distribution deal um, and we're still doing the festival circuit. Um, we haven't had an international premiere yet. And so we're looking towards getting into, you know, a great festival to have a debut um, in Europe internationally. Um, we've been invited to some big, or invited to apply to some big festivals. So we're basically still waiting because, you know, we're still like, we're, we've just, this is, I, I think this is our, this will be our second festival ever that we've actually played at. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we're, we're fresh. We, <laughs> the possibilities are still open for Crutch. Yeah, many more to come. I hope so. Well, thank you. Oh. Thank you so much for bringing this film to us to see. And you guys. best of luck in all your new projects. Hoping to see some more at Docklands and at the Mill Valley Film Festival. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.